Today, we're going to build a comms plan. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So after the recent video came out where the Tech Prepper and I made that contact, a lot of you emailed in asking exactly how we built the communications plan. So let's take a few minutes today and show you what goes into building an effective comms plan. Now, for this particular exercise, we're going to pick on my buddy Anthony up in Michigan, W8APP. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the QRZ page and pull up his details and click on the detail tab here. And what I'm looking for in this is the bearing and the distance information. And the reason I want to know that is if we're running, uh, say, a dipole antenna, I want to be able to orientate that in the correct position to give me the best opportunity to make that uh, targeted contact with Anthony. So we're going to look at 17 degrees and 484 miles. So let's go ahead and plug that into our plan first. Now I do have this here that I am going to export out. I'm going to try to do this as an Excel spreadsheet and as a numbers uh, spreadsheet so that whether you're running Mac or Windows, you'll be able to download that. You should also be able to pull it into a Linux box and use something like LibreOffice to convert that over. So hopefully that will work out. Uh, but this is pretty simple. If you needed to reconstruct it, it shouldn't take you very long at all. So we'll do 17 degrees, and I believe that distance was 484 miles. Now, the date that we're going to attempt this contact is going to be February 3rd. So we'll go ahead and plug that information in here. And the time we're going to attempt this is going to be 1400 UTC. The one other piece of information that I need from the QRZ site is his grid square. So I'm going to just go ahead and highlight and copy that information. Next, let's head over to VOACAP and let's see what VOACAP tells us as far as what band will suit us best for attempting this contact. On the VOACAP website, you'll see that my grid is already set in the top box. So I'm going to plug his grid into the bottom box here. We'll press tab and that will move the two bubbles to the correct position. So we'll pull those up to right there. Now, the next thing we want to do is over here in the top right corner, I want to set the mode. We're going to attempt single sideband and digital. So the first thing I need to do is set single sideband and then set that to 100 watts since that's the power level that we'll both be using. Now, the next thing I want to do is take a look at the antennas. Uh, neither one of us are going to be using a Yagi. Both of us will be using a dipole. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a dipole for 20, 30, 40, and 60 meters. And I'm going to choose the weakest of uh, the, the group here. So we're going to have our dipole up at 17 feet. After we reset those for the transmitter site, we need to do the same thing for the receiving site. So as you can see now, I have that dipole plugged in for 20, 30, 40, and 60 meters on both ends of the contact. Now let's go ahead and pull up our propagation wheel and we need to set the date and time for this contact. So we'll move this to 1400 UTC and then go ahead and set our date to February the 3rd. Now we just need to take a look at the propagation wheel. The outside of the propagation wheel gives you the hours in UTC. So coming around to 1400 right here UTC, which is the time we want to attempt the contact, we can start moving our mouse across these. And as I move the mouse over a particular section, watch the very center of the wheel. So at 1400 UTC, on 20 meters, we only have about an 18% chance of that contact being made. But if we go down to the next box, you'll see that on 30 meters, that jumps up to 99%. Now that would be probably ideal, but we want to attempt a voice contact. 30 meters is digital and CW only. Moving into the next inner circle, you'll see that 40 meters gives us a 98% probability of making the contact. So in this particular case, we want to utilize the 40 meter band. 
So let's head back over to our template and we'll scroll down to the primary section. So the time is going to be 1400 UTC. The frequency, you can pick whichever frequency uh, you think will work for you. And then what I would try to do is spread those out a little bit. So let's say maybe 7.180 and the mode will be lower sideband voice. Next, you want to give yourself a little bit of time. In this case, we'll say five minutes, which is exactly what the tech prepper and I did for that video. So the next time slot will be 1405, and then we can pick another frequency. You can go up or down a little bit in the band, whichever way you think might work out best. And you just want to plug in that data. Now, you'll notice that I gave uh, 7.180, 190, and then I jumped up to 280. So kind of on the other end of the band for a general class license holder. And the reason you want to pick several different bands is just like happened to us in that previous video, the frequency may be occupied at the particular time that you're wanting to use it. So choosing two or three different frequencies gives you some options when it's time to make the contact. Now that we've got the primary portion of our plan established, we need to work on an alternate. For the alternate portion of the plan, you might choose to do voice again, but maybe do it on a different band. If say 20 and 40 kind of both gives you a good shot, you might choose those, one for the primary and one for the alternate. In our case, I'm going to move to digital for the alternate portion of the plan. And I wanna give ourselves a little bit of time if we need to transition to that alternate portion of the plan. So instead of giving it just five minutes, we're going to give it uh, 10 minutes in this particular case. And that should give us enough time to transition between voice and digital. Now, the frequency we're going to use is going to be 7.110. That's going to be upper sideband and digital. And we'll try to use Contestia 4250. At least I think that's how you spell it. Uh, the software here is not liking that particular word. But that gives us now a primary and an alternate. Now, what do we want to use for a contingency? If both of those don't work, what's the next step we can try to go back to? Well, I know from past experience that JSA calls slow mode will get through when almost nothing else does. So in this case, we'll go ahead and move that to just five minutes later at 1430 and we'll pick the JSA call frequency for 40 meters. So 7.078. We'll choose upper sideband digital again, and this time we'll put a note out here that says JSA call slow mode. Next, we need to set up the emergency portion of the pace plan. In this particular case, I would say uh, if we haven't made contact within 15 minutes, we could use any frequency available and we could send a wind link message. And the reason I'm choosing WinLink for the emergency section is now that kind of frees each operator up to use whatever band is working best for them at that particular point in time. Now that you've got all of this filled out, there is a section down at the bottom for supporting information. So you might want to put a screen capture of the VOACAP prediction in this particular section here. You could also do something else, maybe where you run a test using FT8. And by that, I just mean open your FT8 software and call CQ. Once you've called CQ that one time, you can head over to pskreporter.info and plug in the information up at the top. So in this particular case, I'm choosing 40 meters and I plugged in my call sign and FT8. And the last time I called CQ, you can see that I was heard fairly well up in the Michigan area where I want to reach out to. Now, you would want to run this test as close to the time that you're going to make contact a few days in advance, uh, but as close to that time that you're planning on as possible. Then you could take a screenshot of this and drop it down here into the supporting information section. The one other thing you might want to put down here is if you just wanted to capture the band plan, so if there was any last minute questions as to where you might QSY to, you would have that information available to you and no one has to go and look it up. 
Now, tweak this any way you see fit. Maybe you're a CW operator and you want to use that as your primary means of communication and use voice as the alternate or vice versa. That might be preferable to you instead of using a digital mode. But now you have an idea of what we used and how we worked out this communications plan. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.